Hi, my name's John. Welcome to the first part in a series of videos reviewing the Artec 210 Digital ACDC Welder. I'd like to start off by telling you a little bit about myself. The first thing is, I'm not a welder, I'm a motor mechanic. That being said, I've worked in motorsport for quite a while and I have done a lot of TIG welding. I have a YouTube channel, the channel's called Double Boost. I do machining, I do a little bit of welding. I do car repairs, if I go to a steam engine rally or a tractor show, I'll put video of that up. About two years ago I bought an AC DC 201 TIG welder from Artec and I did a little bit of review on it just to fill one of my videos in in Artec, Artec sort and they contacted me and asked if I would like to do a proper review on the welder, which I did. Since then I've done a couple of make sets and a plasma cutter. They contacted me a few weeks ago asking if I'd like to update me analog TIG welder to the latest digital TIG welder. I was a little bit apprehensive at first because I'm not that keen on menus. I mean, all my machinery is imperial. I mean, even my telephone's like a brick. I've got a watch with pointers on, I need to look and see what time it is. I don't want to go through a menu to find out what time it is. Anyway, I downloaded the handbook on the welder and I read through it and it seemed simple enough. What I liked about it was, you can store, if you find a setting that works well, you can store that and go back and use it later. As a friend of mine uses Miller Dynasty welders, so I called it his place and I had a bit of play with them and it's a very, very similar screen, similar setup in similar menus and honestly I found it quite easy to use once I, once I realised there was only basically one button that controls everything, one knob I was quite impressed with it. Anyway, Artec have sent the welder up, it's in a box down there so I think what we'll do is we'll open the box up uh, say exactly what's in there, accessories, have a look at the welder I'll probably go through how to set it up, how to fasten the bottle on electrical supplies, gas supplies and then I'll do a little bit about safety I'm not the safety police but there is obvious things you can do to make things a lot safer for yourself we'll cover some of that these are all the bits that come with the welder first thing is you, you've got an instruction book quite a comprehensive instruction book written in English proper English we'll go through that later Gas regulator, standard organ regulator that drops your pressure down from your, your bottle pressure to a pressure you can use for welding. That's our gas feed, gets the gas from the regulator into your welder. We'll go through that later. Pack there with some consumables in, some tungstens, some ceramics. Are we going through how you set the torch up? The various types of tungstens later on. There's a foot pedal. Quite a nice metal, robust pedal. I do like welding with a foot pedal. The welder does 2T, 4T welding, but I don't like to use a foot pedal. It's got a nice heavy cable on, the cable's a lot, a lot more flexible than the, the, the other pedal I've got. There's a nice non-slip surface on there as well. It's an earth lead, gin connector, standard gin connector. Nice heavy copper cable. That's what they call a stinger. That's for using a, a stick weld electro in there because you can stick weld with an inverter as well. In fact, the inverters are really good for stick welding. We'll be doing some stick welding towards the end of the towards the end of the series because I do like stick welding. 
take torch quite a nice torch with a that's your button for your 240 operation this one's a flexi head so you can you can bend the head into whatever position you want quite handy I've never, never used a flexi head torch before that's a connector for your for the control button that's your power connector and that's your gas connector that's one thing I've noticed I have done, they've put a, a PCL type coupling on the front of the welder mine's got a, a screw yarn type nut, this is a much better setup there's also a spare connector there because I have a smaller torch that I'll be using as well that's quite a nice torch, nice flexible lead on it So basically they're the accessories they come as standard with the welder. I think you get an option on the foot pedal, but quite honestly, if you're doing if you're well near a bench, the foot pedal is certainly the way to go. Right, this is the weather, the unit itself, got a seal number on there, that's worth writing down. There's actually a place in the instruction book to write it. We'll start off at the back of the unit, on off switch. There's a kettle type socket there, which says 240 volt AC. What that's for is an AC output to run a water cooler. Water cooler for your torch, if you're using a water cooler torch. That's your power cable in. That's your gas supply in, there's an earth point there. If you're using the welder on a bench all the time, it's not a bad idea to earth it to the bench, it can stop interference with radio of the AC. On the front of the welder, that's your gas outlet, that goes into your torch, plugs into there, your shielding gas for your torch. There's a control plug there, that's for either your foot pedal or your torch switch for your 2T or your 4T welding. There's two dim connectors, positive and negative. We we'll use positive for the earth on TIG, negative live, other way around for stick welding. Perspex come out to keep all the dust and crap out of there. The welder comes without the plug on. Most welders come with no plugs on. To use the full 210 amps on TIG, you need a 16 amp supply. That being said, on a 13 amp supply, you can still use the welder, you just won't be able to use the full 210 amps. All the welding I'll be doing on the first few videos, I'll be using this adapter, which goes from standard 13 amp plug to a commando type plug on the welder. I have got a heavy supply so I can also plug it in and use the welder on full power for the later videos. To get a 16 amp supply in your workshop isn't the end of the world. Most houses with modern RCB boards in will have a spare breaker. It's just a case of getting an electrician to come and wire you in a 16 amp commando type socket. If you're looking at this video you'll probably know TIG welding stands for tungsten inert gas. We use a tungsten for the electricity to come through, for the electrons to come out the end of and inert gas is a shielding gas. The inert gas we use is pure organ. This is a bottle of pure organ. Inside here, when the bottle is new, there's a charge pressure of 3000 psi. I use quite a lot of gas. I probably use two or three of these a year and a couple of bottles of organ shield a year for MIG welding. What I do, I've got an account with a local gas supplier and I rent the bottles. When the bottle is empty, I take it back and they give us a full one. That works out the cheapest option for me. If you aren't using a lot of gas, the other option is, I believe I'll take a start of doing this as well, you actually buy a bottle. You buy a full bottle of gas, you use the gas, then you pick the bottle up, exchange it for a full one. So all you're paying for is the gas you use. There's no rental. 
when you're finished, when you're finished with the equipment, if you're not going to weld anymore, they take the bottle back off you and you get a full refund. If you aren't using the quantity of gas to justify renting bottles, you can buy little small bottles of gas, got a total waste of time for a machine like this. They won't, they won't last any time at all. The welder needs a pressure of somewhere between 5 and 10 psi. So you use a regulator, the regulator supply with the welder, and that regulates the pressure from the bottle to the welder. One little bit of advice before you start, the bottle is normally fastened onto a, a trolley with a welder, but make sure the bottle is secure, tie it to something, because I guarantee you'll put your regulator on, probably your nice new flow meter, and you'll knock it, and you'll knock it over, and you'll smash the regulator. I know because I've done it. So all we do, simply tie it to something, that won't move and it can't, it can't fall over simple as that when the bottles are new they come with a little protective plastic cap in there take that out and gently crack the bottle that just blows any shite out of the, the seat of the valve Regulator something screws into the bottle, it's ordinary right hand thread, inert gases are right hand thread, flammable gases like acetylene, propane or left hand thread. So that screws into there. It's going to be tight but not ridiculously tight. Right, that's your regulator fitted. From your regulator there's an outlet there. You can put your pipe on from there and go straight to the back of the welder and just use the regulator to set the flow. What I do, I put on what I call a flow meter. It's got a little, little ball in there that's calibrated in litres per minute so you can accurately set up the rate of flow. These do stop gas being wasted. In pure organ gas is quite expensive. Right, so that screws into there once again. One night thread, just a little nip on there. Then you have pipe to your welder, your supply pipe. That screws into the bottom of there. Like that. Looks like an ordinary thread. Okay, so the regulator's back right off, the flow valve's closed. What I'll do, I'll open the, the valve on the bottle. These are the two gauges. That gauge there shows the, the cylinder pressure, cylinder content pressure, and that's the outlet pressure from the regulator. You can see looking at that, there's about 700 psi in the bottle, so the bottle's well down, it's getting due for replacement, but it'll still work. So we've got 700 psi on there, outlet, outlet pressure showing nothing. So if I screw the regulator down, you see the pressure move up. I normally set mine at 10 psi. So that's showing the outlet pressure from the regulator is 10 psi. This is looking from the other side. That's your flow meter. That's your low pressure gauge. I don't think you can see the, the graduations on there. Right, that's better. So if we open, the, open this valve, you can see that ball start to go up there. That's showing cubic feet per hour. The other, other side is litres per minute. And by controlling that little needle valve, you can adjust the flow. I normally aim for 8 litres a minute, which is about 10 cubic foot per hour, about there. We're getting a nice steady flow of gas out the pipe there. But you can see how you can adjust the actual flow. The, pre the pressure remains the same, it's the flow that's changing. Before part of the world are up, to set up gas flows, 
and go through the menus and actually do some welding, I want to talk a little bit about safety. As obvious changes, when you're welding, you've got heat, ultraviolet light, electricity, high amperages. There's certain simple precautions you can take to prevent yourself being injured. With the ultraviolet light that comes off welding will burn your eyes, no doubt about it. I've had welding flashes, most of you probably have, where you get that sound of itching in your eyes, it's not very nice. To stop the bright light from welding damaging our eyes, we wear a welding screen. In the old days it was a big helmet or a handheld shield with a bit of plate glass in. I remember years ago when the, the quick change helmets first came out, I've got a I bought a speed glass one, I've had it for a long time. They were very expensive. The price of helmets have come down. I've got a one here. It happens to be an Artec one. I've used this for the last two years. It's as good as anything I've used. It's all adjustable for delays and times and how dark you want it. One thing it has got, it's got a little button on the side. You can press a button and the, the helmet won't go dark. It stops a light green for grinding just to save you having to lift up and put goggles on. Because quite often you're welding, you want to grind so you lift the thing up and you just have a bit. That's when you get the shade on the eyes. Right, so you must wear proper eye protection when you're welding. Apart from burning your eyes, the light will also burn any skin, any exposed skin. So you wear gloves. Gloves also stop hot sparks from burning you, obviously. These are TIG welding gloves, nice lightweight ones. I've had them quite a while, I'm actually doing another pair. So basically you put your gloves on, you put your hat on and you start a weld. This bit here, it'll burn. Simple as that, it'll go red and the skin will peel off. If you weld for any length of time. You might watch American car or motorcycle building programs where the welding shirt sleeves and little gloves, good for them. Don't do it because it will burn you. Remember years ago, I had a proper jacket on and everything. And I had a little bit of exposed skin and a v-neck shirt I was wearing and that got burnt, badly burnt. Uh, I was in a proper mess, the skin peeled and come off. Had to go to the hospital in the end. So any exposed skin must be covered up. You, don't, you haven't got to wear full leather gear for the sort of welding this is going to be doing. If you're sitting on a bench, but make sure you've got cotton, fire retardant, overalls aren't expensive. Pro band, stuff like that, not expensive to buy can save you a lot of pain. I've already mentioned the bottle, tie the bottle to something, make sure it can't fall over. Don't use a welder outside in the pissing rain, it's not rocket science. Water and heavy currents don't mix. Thanks for watching, I hope you got a little bit out of the video if you got setting up your welder. In the next video we'll power it up and we'll go through the menu and actually do some welding. Thanks once again. The first thing I want to talk about is your eyes. Your eyes are fairly important. Without your eyes, obviously you can't see. So if, naturally, if you're a clumsy bastard, at least when you've got eyes, you can see and watch yourself being clumsy. 